Roll. Welcome to the Table Talk Podcast, where we sit down, pull up a chair, and we get started. This podcast is designed to provide you packed full of information to help you with your training, nutrition, lifestyle, and well-being, where we interview myself through case studies to give you lifetime experience. And then we also interview high-performing individuals or other career-focused people who are looking to make changes in their lifestyle, training, nutrition, and well-being. So let's pull up that chair and let's go. Yo, yo, welcome to the Elite Table Talk where we dive deep in today's topic, which is the training split. What is the right training split for you? What is a training split? Huh? Split? Banana split? Who's the split? Well, let's dive deep into it. So, hey guys, my name's Carl, founder and director of Vitruvian Health, personal training company that's literally dedicated to helping people transform their lives and really to help take the guesswork out of training, nutrition, and accountability. So if you're someone who's thinking about if this and that and there's so much information out there, then that's what for Trigger Health does. We help to kind of bridge that gap. So today's topic is talking about the training split. What is it? Well, a training split, you know, what are the things you need to know? Now, that we have an understanding of our goals or how our body moves. So the thing is, you have to look at how your body moves and what is your goal. Then it comes time to talk about the training frequency. That's what a split is. It's the frequency and how we apply it to a program or a methodology. So if you are someone who trains twice a week, that would be a training split would be either two different days or the same program twice a week. So Training split, you're going to do day one, day two, and there's a two-day split. But you might even do same program twice a week, so that would be a one split. <laughs> Sounds a bit weird. So this is to really talk about what to consider. So there's kind of eight things to really consider when it comes to your frequency or the split you're going to use. So frequency is recovery dependent, meaning the optimal frequency your body can recover from. So if you find you train on Monday and you're like, dog breakfast come Tuesday, well, then you're probably going to then recommend training on Wednesday. And then you train on Wednesday, you feel like a dog breakfast, Thursday, take it off, and then Friday, train again. And that would be a three-day split program. Now, it could be that you do the exact same thing and you go so hard at it, you train three times a week, but your split is a one-day program. Another way you could do it is you do full body, but you do heavy, so like sets of five, like five reps, heavy load, and then you do 10 reps on the second day and then 15 to 20 reps on the third day. And there are different reasons for wanting to do that split, but that would be a three-day split, so you'd have different changes in the program. Carl, what are these changes you speak about? Well, you've got exercises, you've got the order you do those exercises, you've got sets, reps, tempo, rest periods, those are the kind of things that you're looking at. So you said a different rep count. Well, you could also do slow. Uh, so you get eight seconds down. That's a long eccentric. I know. <laughs> That's why it's slow. And then four seconds up. So what? But I want to do this. That would be fast. So like XO zero. So one day could be slow tempo. So say eight seconds down, four seconds up. So it's like 12 seconds a rep. And you do eight reps. Then your Wednesday, you do four zero four zero, or you could do four down, one up. So slow and then fast up. And then the Friday, you call it fun Fridays and you just do whatever you want. Well, that would be three days again, three different splits because there's a difference in each of those, those days. It could be exact same exercises. Uh, another variation could be you do chest and back, day one. The, the notorious chest and back, and then you do Wednesday legs, probably the day most people will miss. Shouldn't do that, though. And then you might do uh, delts, uh, abs, and arms on Friday. So those would be three different frequencies. Okay? So that's what frequency, looking at recovery, depending on like how could you recover from it. Second thing to consider with frequency is, you know, is strength dependent. When it comes to training, frequency becoming more crucial for weaker individuals, for an instance, for improving postural or logic logical for rehab so if we have someone who's quite weak and we want to get better at squatting we might squat three times a week that's a that's a split a frequency the other one could be if you're someone who has you had an injury so your 
not very strong, but it's because you've had injuries and you want to get better at a movement or you want, or you want to build your confidence, then you might do that same movement five, six times a week, but you're not going to be pushing close to failure. So that's more skill acquisition. So strength is a skill and you're looking to adapt to that. Third, frequency and muscle growth dependent. So usually the bigger the muscle, the longer it requires time to recover. Smaller muscle, so big chest, I need two, three days to recover, and for your biceps or in your delts, only need a day. So you could literally do chest two times a week, but you might hit your delts three times a week for optimizing that recovery to maximize growth. But there's lots of people out there much smarter than me that understand how muscles recover. But for yourself, it comes back to that first one, which is recovery dependent. Fourth thing is the frequency and exercise. So again, usually the bigger the movement, more taxing on the nervous system is and also the closer you push to failure so if you annihilate yourself then how long does that take you to recover now there are people that i've seen and i've talked to a lot like i wish i could deadlift four five hundred kilos wish i could but there are people out there and big shout out to big ben he's i mean like this guy did 400 kilos for quite a lot um like for reps quite a strong dude but he's type of person um, personalization and this is uh, coming into the fifth one which is individualized frequency and splits so his splits because of his strength and the taxation on deadlifts he found it was quite taxing it taxed him for up to six weeks so like he would do heavy deadlifts every two weeks but then what he found was he just wasn't fully recovering from it so he deadlifts every week once a week but he only goes heavy every six weeks so he kind of goes, tests himself out. He goes, oh, cool, I got 380. Then he tweaks his numbers and he'll go 280, 300, 320, 340, 360. It's around the number that he was doing before. And he goes, cool, today's six weeks. It's testing day. How do we go? Oh, cool, I got 390. Tapers it back, does his percentages, <laughs> builds himself up. All right, so there's things to understand. So the individualized and exercise dependent is really dependent on you. And so you need to kind of understand how does your body respond and recover. And if you're like, how do I do that? Start. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of people are like, really? How hard is it? It's like you just start. Um, typically, what I like to do when it comes to training programs is what what can the person do? So, you know, coming into number six, ask yourself the question: What type of reps do you like to do? What reps don't you like to do? So the frequency and repetition is dependent. So typically you'll do, most people will do like heavy first. And you see this in most programs that they do heavy first, their B or C series, it's like moderate to light. And then the C series is high rep work. Because most people, um, you know, going to failure on high reps, it's pretty hard to do because the burn, the pump, you're like, oh, it's so hard. Like everyone can keep going and they can max out on the exercise, but it's just the burn is just uncomfortable. And so they just give up. But Carl, I always go to absolute failure. Do you really? If you're someone who thinks you'd go to absolute failure, well, I, you know, this comes into the second, the seventh step, which is frequency of influence of fatigue or stress. So when it comes to stress, you've got sleep, nutrition, how you perceive stress. And so you might come in today and you go, man, I trained the house down and you did 12 reps but you didn't sleep properly, had a big day at work, and you haven't been eating very well, and you might tidy that, tighten that up over the next two, three days, and then bada bing, bada boom, you can now do 18 reps. Game changer. No, you probably just have recovered from the stresses, right? So did you actually train to absolute failure? Yeah, perceived failure, but absolute failure where, like, you can't physically do any more? Maybe not. So let's scratch a little deeper on that question then. So like I do. Well, okay, if you were to do go to absolute failure and you do four sets of, say, leg press and you do 100, 150 kilos at 12 reps, if you go to absolute failure, you should not be able to do those reps again. So if you do 12 reps, you've caused enough trauma and stress on that muscle that it can't do 12. And most people are like, what I did 12 in the second set. Maybe you were still warming up. 
you, you perceive to hit failure, but really you, your body's actually warming up because your warm up before actually wasn't enough. So your joints, the ligaments, connective tissue have blood flow in it, and so you get it. You're like, Carl, you're probably wrong. Well, what was your third set? Oh, I did 12 again. Okay, you're proving my point. If and most people do this, they'll do four sets of 12, and they're like, yeah, I went to failure. But if you had gone absolute failure and you exhausted the muscle fibers, most of us need one to two days to recover, not several minutes. So a lot of time, most people are actually just warming up appropriately. And so come to that third, fourth set. Yes, you are probably getting close to failure because you've built it through fatigue from lack of rest from the other sets, but also because your body has now reached its failing point. So instead of doing the four sets, just do two. Or what it would look like is, and this is what you want to do is cause stress to that muscle to cause it to grow, is maybe when you're pushing close, close to failure, and this is why I prefer close to failure, is you know, 12, you might do close to failure, and it's like 12, 11, 9, 8. That's fine. So when it comes to your next time you come in, you're looking at, so if it was 12, let's say it's 12, 10, 8, 6. You probably then want to be 13, 11, 9, 7. Even if you only got 13, 10, 8, 6, you've still done more than what you did last time because you're one more rep than before. That's still progress. All right. And so um, the eighth thing to consider is the frequency dependent on nutritional intervention. And nutrition plays a big part because inflammatory, nutrients, macros, carbohydrates. Did you have enough carbohydrates to fuel performance? So there's a lot of things there to consider when it comes to the training splits. Now, if you've gotten this far and you're like, well, then what would I do? One, can you train three, four, five times a week? I can only do two. Mm, like, us, so where are you now? So it probably should be a little bit nicer. Where are you now? If you're not doing anything, you could start training twice a week and you would be making progress because you could train Monday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Friday. You want to give yourself at least 72 hour window. If you can train three to five times, you're going to do, in my opinion, get better results. The reason being is you can practice more the movement. Like if you just got three times a week versus two times a week, you'll get better at it. Like if you don't believe me, ask yourself, for those that work a full-time job, how did you get better at your job? You worked four or five days a week full-time and you picked up the school. No one's doing a full-time job working everything in one day, doing nothing for six days and then come back to them and be like, how do I turn the computer on again? So you need frequency or a split. So three, four, or five times a week, typical split that I like to give people is I'll do upper, lower. And the reason I do upper, lower is because if you train really hard and you're new to exercise, you don't know how to train hard, but that is more fatigue and stress on your body than you've ever done before for a while, you're going to need time to recover. So up to seven, like 72, 96 hours. So even if you're sore, you then just train your lower body the next day or the day after. So even if you are sore and fatigued, you're managing that fatigue, so giving yourself more time to recover. You also, when you do the lower body workout, you go, how was your upper body? So you then might do some corrective work or some warm-up drills to help loosen up the muscles, warm them up so you feel less fatigued and less tight, and then train the lower body, and then repeat. And once you notice that you plateau or you no longer can adapt to it, then it's time to change your split up. You could then do full body, but your body then has a level of strength and conditioning. You are aware of how to do the movements, so you don't have any of these newbie gains where you're like, how do I do what? So you're building on that skill and foundation. Four times works really nicely because you can do upper and lower, or you can be more movement specific, where I like to do horizontal push, um, pull, like a horizontal and vertical push and pull, but I'll do upper, so like bench press, rows, and accessory vertical press work. And then I'll do lower body, but that's squat focused with then hinge patterns. Then I do vertical focus on the third day with then horizontal accessories. And then on the fifth day, I do hinge focus with like squat accessories. So you're able to hit everything technically twice, but you're hitting heavier loads and then lighter loads. And so you're hitting the same movement twice, but you do it with different repetition counts. And that factors in that recovery element. So that's how I do that, how I'd work around it. If you're like, that was interesting, I'd like to know more, or hey, can I actually get a, a program where you like show me this more? Yeah, email us at info at you, and we'll send you a PDF of a three, four, or five day split. Just put in the subject three, four, or five. So pick a number. Don't send all three. You don't get all three. You can have one. So 
That is training splits, bit of an explanation, short and sweet. That's the Elite Table Talk, breaking it down, keeping it simple, and then providing you some resources and information that you can apply and use yourself. Till next time, adios, amigos.